Hey guys, Angus here with another Airsoft review for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Echo One Red Star Igor Airsoft AEG, this being the model with the false wood stock. Now if you're interested in picking up this gun after you watch this review, there'll be a link down below in the description to airsoftstation.com where you can purchase it for about $230. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and hop straight into this video. All right, now getting right into the video here, skipping over the box and all that good stuff, let's start talking about the Igor's external construction. Now out of the box, this thing is primarily constructed of metal, however, there are a couple plastic pieces on this AEG. Starting off with that orange tip up front, that's indeed constructed of plastic. Moving a little bit backward, your grip here that I'm currently holding, this is constructed of a rather so solid, good, hard quality plastic there. And the big piece would be your false wood stock. Now in case you didn't know, you can get this AEG in two models, so the wood stock or a solid black stock me. I like the look of wood even when it's fake so I chose to review this particular model here. Now I was a little disappointed with the stock. It is kind of flimsy and uh, feels a little bit cheaper as far as uh, compared to the rest of the gun. However, as you'll see in just a few moments it is indeed hollow so that might account for a little bit of it. Something to note is that this does look very similar or probably is the exact same to an SVD style stock so they probably do make some real wood kit that would fit this AEG but uh, speaking of the hollowness that is indeed for your battery compartments so that might pose a problem when trying to convert. Uh, otherwise it's you know it looks all right you can definitely tell it is a plastic not a real wood though uh, definitely as soon as you lay your hands on it but a little flimsy eh, not too bad though. The rest of the AEG is indeed constructed of metal this includes both of your iron sights your whole kind of integrated suppressor up front your upper and lower receiver your top cover your magazine is constructed of plastic uh, both of them that you do get with the gun and then all of your extremities are also constructed of metal including your sling mount your trigger, your trigger guard, etc. So you get a good mix of metal on this AEG, uh, just some large plastic pieces including your stock and your grip up front. Overall the externals are put together rather solidly and there are a couple of nice touches in the forms of painted on markings which we'll zoom in on for you now. There are markings on both sides of the AEG, this first one here on the left side of the gun reading Echo One Igor. These are both just painted on, therefore don't expect them to last too long. They look nice now, but they may fade away. On the opposite side of the gun, you do have a marking reading Red Star. Now as far as internals go on this AEG, just want to start off, I'm no internals expert, you guys know that, I just like to have fun with Airsoft. Uh, this weapon does use a modified version 3 gearbox. I've always had good experiences with Echo One, they tend to have great quality control, making their gearboxes in their AEGs uh, very clean, not gunky and greasy like you can get with some of the other clone models out there. So overall, uh, internals are pretty respectable and definitely perform well straight into the box. Alright, now jumping straight into the features of this AEG, let's go ahead and talk about battery space for your electric gun. Now when I first saw this weapon I figured eh, AK style that battery's got to be housed under the top cover however there's no space under there so where am I going to house the battery well it's inside that hollow wooden stock I was talking about a little earlier in order to access your battery compartment you'll need to remove your butt pad in the back this does require the need of a Phillips head screwdriver Hence why we are back inside because I forgot one. So anyway, when you do have the Phillips head screwdriver, you want to unscrew both of the screws in the butt pad in order to remove and it. ultimately reveal your battery compartment and your small type connector. Now overall this battery space is very narrow and slender, therefore it's perfect for the included 9.6 volt 1200 milliamp stick type battery, uh, which would simply slide into the lower portion of the gun here. However, that being said, uh, perhaps Perhaps a more slender LiPo could also fit inside this gun. Uh, other than that, you pretty much are limited to those two categories, the slender LiPo and the stick type because it's such a narrow battery space. Uh, overall, it's easy to access and uh, really not going to come undone in the field, especially if you do have those screws tightened right away. Uh, the only negative being that you do need to carry the, carry the Phillips head with you in order to change your battery. With your battery installed, that does mean you could actually fire your AEG and in order to select your fire setting, you would use your weapons fire selector switch which is similar to an AK style and located on the right side of the gun. Now your standard three settings on here similar to an AK you have safe up top, full auto in the middle, and semi-auto all the way down at the bottom. Now this selector does require a little bit of force to move. It is indeed constructive metal and rubbing against the metal body there we already are starting to see a little bit of wear. Uh, that's something to expect when you have metal on metal. Overall it's a nice quality selector switch. It does require a little bit of force to move so this thing definitely will not be slipping in between settings right into the box. Now as far as the Igor's magazine goes, it is its own unique, unique style. I was able to get an AK mag to fit in the well, but with my various tries I couldn't get any of them to feed. Now in order to eject your magazine, it's just like an AK, you push it on the release behind the mag, 
and it will drop right out, so be prepared to catch it. Now, your weapons magazine itself is the source of 100 complaints for me, but we'll get into those in just a second here. Now, you do get two of these magazines with your gun. They are both constructed entirely of plastic, and they function like any standard high cap, except they only hold about 150 rounds. You would load the BBs in through the very small trap door up the top, the BBs would feed through the top, and then you would obviously wind the high cap down at the bottom. Overall, it's a very stubby mag, like I mentioned, and only holds 150 rounds. Now, holding 150 rounds is not really a problem. What's a problem is the fact that this thing really is a feeding nightmare. Because it's such a short, stubby magazine, that spring up front that feeds the BBs is so small that you have to constantly wind it. I don't like that. I'm no huge fan of high caps to begin with, but I can tolerate them except when I have to wind constantly. If you watch the performance test, some of my full auto bursts were four BBs before I had to wind, and that cripples this gun to me because eh, it's just a little bit too much winding. I want a magazine that can feed consistently without me having to constantly worry about turning that gear at the bottom. So that was the biggest issue with this gun for me, was the fact that the magazine is so stubby and short that it's just a pain to wind and a pain to feed into your AEG. You've got to wind it constantly, believe me. In order to put the magazine into your gun, make sure you do it carefully, otherwise it won't lock in. Place the front lip in first and raise it upward like so to hear that click. At that point it's locked in, it's solid, and it's not going to fall out. Taking a look at the iron sights on the Igor AEG, overall they're pretty simplistic and let's go ahead and zoom in on them for you now. Now zooming in on the rear side of this AEG, it's very reminiscent of an AK style rear sight. Essentially this thing is adjustable, pretty much what you would do say if you wanted to adjust uh, the range that you'd be shooting for, you would simply squeeze in on the sides slide forward a little bit and therefore you could elevate your sight a little bit or vice versa if you wanted to lower it by sliding it in the opposite direction. That slit in the rear sight is meant to line up with your front sight which in turn is a simple enclosed adjustable sight post. So the iron sights personally I really do like them. They're simple, easy to use and they're pretty accurate to the gun overall. That being said this weapon does have a little bit of customization. However if you're not too fond of the weapon's iron sight straight out of the box and want a little bit of customization for your AEG here this gun does have the side mount already built into the receiver of the weapon. Therefore, what this is used for would be that you could purchase an AK style scope mount that would mount along here and at that point it would uh, wrap up top with a rail and then you could add an optic of some sort. So out of the box, this thing isn't necessarily customization ready, but it does have the ever important side mount there that you could purchase a scope mount in order to uh, actually customize your AEG. I like that because I really don't like AKs that don't have one. When you pull the weapon's charging handle back, you will reveal the AEG hop up unit which is that clear piece there. If you were to slide this towards the front of the gun you could decrease the hop. If you were to slide it back towards the shooter you would increase the hop. Overall this weapon's hop up is pretty effective more so on semi-auto. On full auto if you watch our performance test uh, mainly the mag kind of cripples it a little bit but it wasn't as effective. Overall a decent unit it's very easy to adjust even if you have big gloves in the winter time. When you release the charging handle you get a semi-satisfying right, clack. final dissatisfying clack there, we can go ahead and hop into the final conclusion of this video review. Overall, was I excited to get this AEG? Definitely. I love unique looking guns and with the whole integrated suppressor on the uh, front of the weapon here, as well as the wood stock, this thing definitely looks unique and I was excited to get my hands on it. Did it live up to my expectations? Well, for the most part, yes. Overall, the externals on the gun are very solid. I do like the markings that are painted on rather nice and bright for the moment. The internals, I've always had good experience with the Echo 1 and the overall performance of this AEG uh, worked out very well. It was pretty accurate and was able to hit a target uh, very well at some farther distances if you watch our other performance test video. Battery space is easy to access despite the fact that you do have to have that Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, your fire selector switch, it's nice, it's not going to slip between settings. You do have the ability to possibly uh, attach a scope mount and therefore an optic to this AEG thanks to the side rail, but if you don't, the iron sights are accurate to the gun. They're pretty simple and easy to use. The thing I didn't care for about the gun, it comes down to the magazine. You know, uh, if they were to create maybe a longer one in the future or maybe make some kind of compatibility with an AK mag or something like that, I might prefer the gun a little more. Just the magazine, the fact that I have to constantly wind it when I'm shooting, especially on full auto, really cripples the AEG for me because uh, I just don't like high caps, and also it's just one that you really, really, really have to wind uh, too much, in my opinion. There's a little bit of feeding issues as far as that magazine goes. 
Otherwise, though, I could definitely see you taking this AEG quite a few ways. It does give you that carbine and sniper look, in my opinion, if you were to take it out to the uh, airsoft field. Perhaps you could rock it as that sniper behind the lines, or maybe just as that assault player using this AEG. It's a unique weapon that could go both ways on the airsoft field, and I do like that. Just be careful that, uh, you know, you take account that you have to wind that magazine constantly. So overall, good gun, just some magazine issues, and that would be the biggest con for me. That being said, guys, this has been Death Ray Airsoft's review of the Echo one Red Star Igor Airsoft AEG. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.